please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll always be updated with our Philippines. The colonized Philippines in 10 minutes. You're probably not aware, or you just choose to ignore the obvious fact that every region in the Philippines is on some kind of century long ago conflict on who is superior when it comes to everything under the sun. For so many years, the national capital region, where mainly Tagalogs reside, held the throne. Until that, the first Mindanaoan president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, came and now kind of evened out the playing field for some. Why this competition? Well, we need to trace back our country's colonized history in order for us to have a glimpse of what caused this headache-inducing rivalry between regions in the first place. 1521. We have our little barangays, headed by their independent datus, and protected by their soldiers with their primeval swords and arrows. Imagine them praying to trees, to mountains, and everything they believe to give them life. Picture them in their vulnerable little homes, thinking there was no conflict greater than being overpowered by their neighboring barangay. Picture Ferdinand Magellan and his cronies stumbling upon our little island and thinking, Whoa, an uncivilized land. Mine it is. Ferdinand Magellan from Spain was in search for the Molucas Islands, or otherwise called the Spice Islands. He then docked in the island of Homonhon and was accepted nicely by the natives. These natives even brought them food and threw parties for them. After a week, Magellan went to the island of Limasawa, where he was welcomed by Raja Kulambu. It was all party and wines before Lapu Lapu, who is known as the first hero of the Philippines, felt something was off with these foreigners and he gathered his men to fight them. To make the story short, Magellan was killed and his cronies flew back to Spain. It could have ended there. He could have left our little island to fend off for itself. But the damage was done. Now Spain knew that there was a potential in our land and so sent numerous generals in hope of occupying us. In 1542, Rui Lopez de Villalobos conceived the beautiful and very appropriate idea of baptizing the archipelago with the name Filipinas or Filipinas in honor of our fortunate prince, the man who saved it from Christendom, Rey Felipe II or King Philip II of Spain. February 13, 1565, a new ship arrived in Samar under the leadership of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Each time they dock on shores, the natives wouldn't want anything to do with them, so they would shun them away. This drove the hungry and badly treated Spaniards into desperation. On March 16, 1565, Legazpi entered into a blood compact with Sicatuna in Bohol. Because of that, finally, he gained the trust of natives and started influencing the people of Bohol. The Spaniards went for Cebu and began what Magellan failed to do. There was a fight. But shortly after, the Cebuanos conceded defeat because of the highly modernized weapons that Legazpi and his men were using. Legazpi established the first permanent Spanish settlement on Cebu and became the first Spanish general governor shortly thereafter. Legazpi was victorious and prepared to sail to Manila. On 1569, Legazpi made it to Manila. At first, he was welcomed by the two leaders, Raja Sulaiman and Raja Matanda. Thinking that the Spaniards only want peace and friendship, sooner or later, they realized that it was another invasion. In 1571, it ended up in battle where the Spaniards were victorious again. Shortly after that, the residents of Manila pledged loyalty to the new ruler, and Manila was soon named a city of Spain. It was crucial to understand the methods that were employed by Spain in conquering our islands. There are two noteworthy ones that we can study, so we'll know exactly why the Philippines still remain undivided after years of achieving freedom. First is the Cruzada. This is the use of both cruz, cross, and espada sword to infiltrate not only our body but also our national soul. Remember in the past video, we talked about how early Filipinos were mostly pagan? Remember how they were so fascinated with the idea of epic heroes who conquered death? Imagine the Spaniards preaching about the story of Jesus to these pagan natives, telling them stories about hell and heaven, and their religion, Catholicism, which is the only way to avoid being incarcerated in the afterlife. Of course, these people would believe them. Anyone in those times would. Well, not really everyone. That's what the sword is for, to take care of those who chose not to believe.
Second is divide and conquer. There is nothing more than scream helplessness than further dividing little barangays and later on regions to fend up for themselves so the Spaniards could crush any rebellion before it could create much harm. In fact, most of the rebellions attempted by Filipinos collapsed before regions could unite. Remember kids, we are at our most vulnerable state when we are divided. But together, we are stronger. Yes, it might sound cliche. But we were defeated by this simple yet effective strategy. Now, this is pertinent to our present. Only two tribes managed to resist against the Spaniards' colonization, the Muslims in Mindanao and the Igorots of Cordillera. These two tribes did everything they could to preserve their culture and religion. Yes, one of the reasons why the Muslims in Mindanao succeeded in repelling Catholicism was because they already have their own religion namely Islam. Sultan Kudarat was famous for uniting the Sultanates in Mindanao to prevent the Spaniards from invading their land. He famously said, Look at the regions that have already submitted to them. Note how object is the misery to which their peoples are now reduced. Behold the condition of the Tagalogs and of the Visayans, whose chief men trampled upon by the Minas Castilian. If you are of no better spirit than these, then you must expect similar treatment. You, like them, will be obliged to row in the galleys, just as they do. You will have to toil at the shipping building and labor without ceasing on their public works. You can see for yourselves that you will experience the harshest treatment while thus employed. Be men. Let me aid you to resist. All the strength of my sultanate, I promise you, shall be used in your defense. Well, in their own language, the Spaniards managed to stay in the Philippines for over 300 years. During these times, the Filipino became slaves in their own land and were subjected to inhuman punishments and unfair laws, which favored their foreign invaders. Of course, several rebellions against the Spaniards arose over time, with notable heroes like Dr. Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio leading them. It was finally in June 12 of 1898 when first president Emilio Aguinaldo finally waved the Philippine flag in Kawit Cavite to signify the end of oppression. Well, not really. It was also during this time that the Spanish-American War took place and ended with the Spaniards conceding defeat to the Americans. Thus, the Treaty of Paris was signed in December 10 of 1898, thereby also selling the Philippines to the Americans. At this point, our country was both at its peak and most vulnerable state. We just managed to overthrow our invaders after three centuries by uniting our forces and we are pretty much as civilized as any other country. But we are also grappling with our gained autonomy. There was nothing else that the Americans could have given us. They knew it. They were already predicting the amount of headache it would take to conquer us by force. They could not very well use the same Crusada employed by the Spaniards. Most Filipinos are already either Catholics or Muslims. We also just came from a massive rebellion that destroyed most of the Spaniards' forces. We could very well do it again. So the Americans chose another strategy, a friendly one. They became our savior. On May 1, 1898, the Battle of Manila Bay took place under the command of Admiral Patricio Montojo. This was a staged fight to make the Filipinos believe that the Americans were on our side, that they came to ally with us in driving the Spaniards off our lands. When Aguinaldo waved the Philippine flag, it was for our freedom. Yet, colonization manifests in different ways. It was already carved into our soul, beaten to us the moment foreign invaders landed in our islands. For so many years, the Philippines continues to find its foot against countries that managed to develop their identity. It was what the Japanese tried to tell us, to own our Asian heritage rather than becoming enchained by the West. But it was already too late. We were conquered again and again by the Spaniards, then the Americans, and then the Japanese, just because we failed to unite as a nation in some of the most important turning points of our history. We are always so focused in saving ourselves, our families, our barangays, our region. But we overlook the fact that we need to start thinking of our nation as one entity, one body, and one force, rather than perceiving it as divided regions who are fighting for their own individual safety. If we manage this, perhaps, just perhaps, we can finally start healing after years of being enslaved by foreign invaders, be it through land, culture, or beliefs. So. 
What do you think about today's video? Do you think the Philippines will ever achieve true freedom? Comment down below and let us know your thoughts about this video.